Hey Finksters and welcome to this video where I want to show you the Python list pop method. Okay, so how does it work? Uh, the list met pop method, so say we have a list of three elements, one, two, three, and the pop method re then removes and returns the last element from an existing list. And um, yeah, so for example, if you want to like take an element, you can simply call pop. And now if you print the element, you see it's the last element from the list, the value three. And if you print the list, you see that the last element was removed from the list. So the pop, opera pop operation does two things. It um, removes an element from a list and it returns this to, um, uh, to the caller, to the caller of the function basically. These are the two things the pop method does. And there's a variant. So um, when you use the pop method without an argument, um, then basically it just takes the last element in the list. But uh, the pop method has an optional argument. So if you call list pop, you open it. And the optional argument is the variable index. Okay, so it will, you can also specify an index, which is, and many, many coders actually don't know this, but you can specify an index, which gives, simply gives you the element at this position. So it removes an element at a certain position in the list and returns it to the caller. And uh, so for example, if you want to like grab the first element of the list instead of the last element, then we take the index zero because uh, as you know, list indexing starts counting at the, uh, index zero. Okay, so the first element has index zero, the second ele element has index one and so on. Okay, and you see it, uh, it gives us the first element of the list. If you print the contents of the list, only the value two remains. Okay, so this way you can do many nice things. The pop method uh, is for example used for Python stacks. So if you, um, for example, want to create a stack, you can simply, so Python doesn't have, has, have a built-in um, stack data structure because it's not needed actually. You can use a list and the list ju works just fine. So say we have a stack and then we, pu we um, push some elements to the stack. There's no push method, but you can use the append method. Like say we um, push the value five to the stack. We push the value 42 to the stack and we push some other value. We can even push some heterogeneous uh, values like a string value to the stack. And now you can print the stack. You see it consists of like uh, three values and you can also like pop things from the stack, okay? You see it has this this uh, um, um, specific last in, uh, first in, last out behavior, okay? So we put in the value five um, at the beginning. So this, the value five was was put in into the, uh, was put into the list first, and then second, the value 42, third, the value n. But now if we pop the, the values, then we first get the value n, and because it always returns the last element of the list, and now this, the uh, second value would be 42, and the last value would be the one we put in first, value five. Okay, so this way you can like emulate the behavior of a stack very efficiently, and um, uh, yeah, you don't actually don't need the stack data structure to do this. Then. Um, Common question is, yeah, what if you want to pop by value? Okay, so you may know the remove function. So if you have a list with say four values and you want to remove a value, you can simply call list remove value three. And this will then actually remove the first occurrence of the value three from the list. But as you see, there's no return value of the remove function because the remove function simply operates on the on our original list. It doesn't return anything. Uh, and uh, but the pop method actually it returns something. So man, many people ask, okay, can we have something like a remove function um, that also returns the removed element, uh, which would be then the pop function, but not the pop pop function works only on an index. It doesn't work for a uh, value element like uh, for an element actually. So because here in the remove function we we pass as an argument the value of the element to be removed. Um, so if you have for example. Um, say a list of primes, one, two, three, five, seven, eleven. Okay, some prime numbers in the, in the list. And now we want to like pop some um, prime number actually yeah, from the list. So we want to get the element, then we call simply the pop operation. But the pop, as I already told you, it takes as an argument uh, an index. So we need to find the index of the element to be popped. And now say we have element uh, seven, we want to pop element seven. So we first need to determine the index of element seven by calling the function primes.index seven. Okay, this gives us the index of element seven, which should be 
0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So element 7 has index 4. Uh, so this whole function returns 4 basically and then we call primes.pop4. So it, it pops the fifth element with index 4 from the list. And now you can see, so if you, if you print some prime it gave us the element 7. And also if you check out the list primes it has removed element 7 from the list. Okay, so this way you can emulate a behavior like pop by value. Um, so what if you want to uh, like pop multiple elements from a list? So for example, the first n elements, then you can simply have, so um, let's, let's, have a, let's copy a list. Okay, now we have a list of uh, string values, a, b, c to f. And uh, now we want to like pop, say the first five values from the list. So we simply call pop zero. We use um, list comprehension for i in range five. This way you can, we can pop the uh, first five elements um, from a list basically, okay? And store it in a new list. So if you do this, we get the new list a, b, c, d, e. And if you check the old list, it now contains only one element. Yeah, because we have popped, like removed and returned all elements from this original list. Uh, so the first five elements from the original list. So the sixth, sixth element, which was the value f, is still there because we haven't popped it yet. And the uh, list comprehension yeah, works like this. We have the um, ex expression part and the context part. The context part gives us uh, like a variable that takes all values in a given context, like all values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah, as defined here by the range function and we go over all of those values and then this expression part just tells us what to do with this uh, with this value yeah and basically we don't need e even the the variable i so we could even throw it away um, but yeah we simply want to pop five times and we um, store the result in our list okay so and then obviously what if you want to pop the last n elements of a list then you can do something similar just uh, using the default index, um, so don't using don't, don't use the element uh, the index zero. Use the default index, so actually call the pop function without any argument. This will just pop the last element of the of the list, so it works similarly. So then a good question is what is the time complexity of the pop operation? So let's have some let's look at some code um, to check the so the time complexity of the pop function is uh, constant. So it's um, O0 basically, uh, O1, so it's proportional, it, it takes a constant amount of time to pop an element from a list, no matter how large the list is basically, okay? So why is this the case? Because um, internally er um, lists are implemented with arrays in CPython, okay? So CPython is the implementation of Python and it works with array lists. Um, so um, and array lists like the base data type of array lists are arrays and arrays so to access any element in an array um, takes only um, like a constant amount of time no matter how large the list is and um, therefore like the time complexity of the pop operation is really fast because we can we can get an element fast and we can also remove an element fast if you have if you have found the element we can simply like take the uh, take the element and then connect the, the two sub lists um, uh, that separated this element um very quickly like in, in in constant runtime now let's check whether this is really true so we import uh maybe i i, I just give you the function work faster so here i uh, first import the matplotlib library for plotting because we want to show really show that it has linear runtime complexity and then we have a main loop we iterate over um, all values like uh, all multiples of 100k, like 100k, 500k, 600k, 700k, 800k, and so on. And then we create a list. List of like that many elements. It's just a list from zero to the maximum number of elements. So we have, for example, here a list of, of 500,000 elements in the first loop iteration. In, this, in the second loop iteration, we have a list of 600,000 ele elements. So very large lists, basically. And then we start, we, we track the time. So we take a timestamp here and here, and we measure the duration of the pop operation. Yeah. So if you pop the, like the first element in the, in the list, how much time does it take? And then we plot everything. So let's execute this. 
and you see okay so there's some variation obviously but you see with growing list size we don't have generally growing um, time complexity okay so here on the y-axis you see the elapsed time on the x-axis you see the number of list elements so usually if something has linear time complexity you would expect a graph going from the um, upper left to the uh, upper right uh, from the um, yeah, left uh, below yeah, um, to the upper right basically yeah um, uh, lower left to the upper right sorry uh, and this is not the case here so we have more or less with some variation we have the constant time complexity and um, even if you have like let's close the plot so what happens if you don't pop the first element but the last element then it has also constant time complexity because we don't really care you see the line is flat it has constant time complexity so it doesn't really matter um, in all cases we have constant time complexity because um, array lists <coughs> have t constant access um, um, element access complexity okay so then um, what else so can we for example okay what are some alternative to the um, pop method um, there are some alternatives so for example if you just want to remove an element so by value not by index as the pop operation then you can use the remove uh, method which you have already seen like you have a list now I call it list um, x of four values and now you can call remove value 3 and let's check list x and you see that it has removed the element 3 not the index 3 because this would be uh, the element 4 but the element 3 from the list okay now we can on this we can call the pop method which just takes like the pop method say on index 1 which then gives us the element 2 because this element 2 is currently at index 1 then you can use to like um remove all elements from the list you can simply call clear clear and then we can like if you print x you see the list is empty so the clear operation it removes all elements from the list okay and then one there's one more way to remove elements from a list so say we have the list 1 4 6 99 for example and now we can use del the del keyword um, with some slice so for example we can like even remove the first element from the list yeah which we simply call uh, del list zero um or we can even remove whole slices like say the first two elements and now if you if you check the list it contains only one element which is left okay so these are the most important um functions i have uh or actually uh features I have found uh, regarding the pop operation. If you have any questions then don't hesitate to ask and uh, thanks for listening to this video. See you in the next video. Bye!